I'm Dustin Beck. I'm the VP of esports. Waylon Roselle, a senior esports manager. So, um, you know, we uh, we want to talk a little bit about the uh, the league, which uh, which we're calling the League Championship Series of the LCS. And you know, we're all huge esports fans at Riot, and um, the game was actually designed as a competitive esport, and you know, it shares a ton of the kind of similar fundamentals of any traditional sport for that matter. And it's competitive, it's strategic, it's team oriented. Uh, no two games are ever the same. <clears throat> and, you know, when we when we kind of started seeing our community's reaction to these eSport events that we were doing, it was um, it was pretty amazing how, how many folks were watching these events. And uh, and it just has motivated us to go even bigger and better with our eSport stuff. And, and, you know, when we were kind of designing what we wanted to do with Season 3, we took a step back and, and we thought, like, what do eSport fans want and kind of what's been lacking in the current environment and there hasn't been really a, a structure that mimics a NFL or an NBA so we create we created the league and that um, that's gonna allow for these players to focus exclusively on playing League of Legends they now have compensation and salaries they don't need to go to tournaments and fight over prize money anymore like they can they can dedicate their professions to playing league competitively and we think it's gonna up the level of the game and it's gonna create the structure that allows esports to thrive um, and also, in, you know, in addition to the structure, we're really looking to level up the viewing experience this year. This is something we're laser focused on. Um, you know, esports is exciting. It's dynamic. It's interesting. Um, but we want to deliver something more like a Monday Night Football to our esports fans here. Something that, you know, with the LCS structure, we're going to be able to have games on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so our fans can tune in every week and see their favorite teams play. And we think that'll just be something like a rich, fun experience for them. Um, we're also leveling up the production value, and we built out a studio in LA. If you saw the NA qualifiers, we had them there, and we have a studio in Cologne uh, for our European league. And um, our producers, with backgrounds in the NFL and the Olympics, um, they're really going to focus on the storytelling and the narrative, which is something that I think esports hasn't focused on yet, and should really just bring another level of uh, depth to the league this year. Sure. So a lot of the things we're focusing on is, you know, consistent programming. Waylon mentioned this, but we have matches two days a week in North America, two days a week in Europe, and and fans are going to be able to have appointment-based viewing. So, you know, like we we all know Monday Night Football. Like I'm getting together with friends. I'm watching. I'm drinking beers, watching uh, watching the games. Am I allowed to say drinking beers? Yeah, we're good with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you know, just hanging out and, and now people can do that with League of Legends too. Like there's a consistent schedule, like people know in week seven that, hey, like TSM is going to be playing against Curse or, you know, whoever's favorite teams are playing against their rivals. And in this consistent program too is also going to drum up rivalries. Now teams are going to be seeing each other every single week. And, um, and that's a cool feature that we're excited about. There's HD programming. There's this video team that is going to focus on bringing out the player drama or and, and kind of diving into who are these guys. Like before, it's it's tough to really like dive into who, who a person is when they're playing, they're behind a computer, they're wearing their headsets, they're yelling into their microphones. But now we're gonna explore like, you know, how these guys get into competitive gaming? Who are they outside of the game? And that's what's really exciting for us. Yeah, like a couple other features that are sort of tertiary to esports that really will sort of set the foundation for long-term success. Um, one example is like the league system that's launching with season three. And um, you know that will allow fans of all levels, all skill levels, whether you're bronze, gold, or you're an aspiring pro player, to have this like great competitive experience. And we think that's important for fostering the next round of pros, um, you know, five, 10 years down the road. And um, you know, we're also building out an esports website, lollysports.com. And uh, there you'll be able to check your schedule. Um, you know, if you if you're a fan of Curse, you'll be able to see, you know, Curse is playing in week four on Thursday at this time. And we think that this is something that will just make um, esports not only fun to watch, but also much more convenient and accessible to watch. And on the on the website too, there will now be live stats that people can go grab. So after the game, they'll they'll be able to say, oh, like how they do on top lane and compare that to other top laners throughout the week. And there'll be like MVPs of the week and so forth. So we're really excited about all these other things that we're adding in. Yeah, you know, we are we are seeing a, a big uptick in in the player behavior of the pros. You know, for for better or worse, these pros are role models for a huge community and tons of fans 
and uh, and they kind of have a responsibility to to hold themselves accountable for that type of stuff. So you know they've they've been super receptive and actually have encouraged us um, with with the recent um, decisions that we've made. So so that's been great to see, and the community's also been excited about that. The uh, the recent EU bans were, were pretty unfortunate from a timing perspective. You know, it's it's tough doing these right before a tournament, but you know, as um, as these things go, things are just really fluid and happen really quickly. And and we have a whole team that's dedicated on kind of looking at players' behaviors and all that stuff. And we didn't know which teams had even qualified for the tournament. So once we found out all the folks that were in the thing, we kind of cast the net and checked into everyone's accounts. And unfortunately, the timing wasn't great, but um, it's something we had to do. Well, I think um, we have an all-star break um, this in this LCS, uh, which will be in China, where you have an all-star game. You're going to see uh, your you, the fans, are going to vote uh, to see who's going to represent your region, um, and I think that'll be pretty cool and fun. Uh, in terms of other game types, you know, really we'll see as things develop. Um, if there's interest uh, in the other game modes as an esport, we're always open to considering it because we really just want to deliver what the players are looking to see. Um, however, I think. In the, in the short term, you probably see stuff like ARAM and fun and interesting modes at the All-Star break, kind of like the skills competition at uh, like uh, an, an NBA game or like an NHL All-Star game. So um, I think that's what you'll see in the near term. Yeah, so we don't think that, um, that TV is in our near-term plans. Um, right now, our, our entire community is consuming all these matches online, and, and that's fine for us. Uh, most of our players that even do have TVs are using Netflix and, and Hulu and, and not subscribing to cable. So TV is not something that we're approaching right now. Um, but who knows if it's signed down the road that we're going to consider. Uh, as for uh, an arena, we have one now in LA, and we also have one in Cologne. And um, we're, we're really excited about those. It's going to allow us to do a lot of things around the broadcast that's going to just level things up and, and make the experience for fans better. Um, and then also we're doing a lot of traveling events where we're going to be doing stuff where other sports, other traditional sports are doing events. So we're excited for this year and, and the kind of roadmap that we have ahead. You know, it, it's hard to even imagine what uh, what League of Legends as an esports going to look like in five years. We've been moving so fast just in the past year that um, it's kind of gone, gone above and beyond what we had we'd already hoped for. Um, but, you know, if we had kind of pie in the sky, what's this look like? Like, we expect the teams to be household names just like the Yankees or the Lakers or European teams as well. And, you know, we think building building this league around franchises and around teams is what is really going to be exciting and make this a long-lasting, legitimate sport. You know, the rules of soccer or football haven't really changed over the past 50, 100 years, and there's no reason that League of Legends shouldn't succeed as a sport for a, for a decade, if not decades, plural. So we're excited about that. Yeah, you know, the, the, the biggest lesson and the, probably the most trying moment of, of our time on, on the eSports team was probably our, our Saturday, the World Playoffs, when, when we were susceptible to the internet outage and there were the cheating scandals. So it's something that, you know, we had a ton of time to do a retrospective on. And, and granted, we had to turn a show around in, in a couple of days to redo the playoffs and then go into the World Finals. But during the off season, you know, we kind of whiteboarded everything out and we're like, how do we have this never happen again? And, you know, every every mistake we are laser focused on not repeating. And it's something that's going to make the league stronger. But, you know, we're uh, we're not under any illusion that, you know, there's not going to be bumps and bruises along the way. But uh, but it's how we kind of react and, and handle those situations as they come up. And, and we expect kind of never to make the same mistake twice with those types of things. Yeah, there's still going to be our big regional events, like we're still planning on participating at PAX in North America and Gamescom for Europe. But, you know, we really think that the League Championship Series is going to elevate the competition across the globe. You know, kind of Korea has the benefit of, of playing in weekly matches at the OGN Stadium, and now North America is going to have that benefit. And same with Europe. And, I mean, we just recently saw at IAM Katowice that, that M5 is back, right? A lot of people kind of had... Had, um, had brushed them aside like they were gone and, and they went and took down both of the Zubu teams. So we think the competition just globally is going to be really good. And, and as the scene just continues to evolve, the competition's going to as well. And, and we're excited to see kind of different metas, you know, popping up in different locations as well. So that's been really exciting for us. Yeah. I mean, actually, uh, I can expound on that. Also, we're going to have single game uh, matches during the regular season. And um, I think that that's really going to encourage experimenting 
and um, in innovative play. And this is, might be a challenge to the North American teams, but I, I really think that they're going to step up to the challenge and, um, and really bring their A game with experimenting, pushing the game forward. I don't see any reason why um, with the foundation that the teams now have in, in the regular season and gaming houses sprouting up that NA can't be as competitive as any of the other regions out there.